Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. This is Alpha Quadrant 6, and this is a Star Trek Discovery after show. We just got through seeing uh, Season 2, Episode 12, Through the Valley of Shadows. We're closing in on the end of Season 2, and another kick-ass episode. I think the end of the season is really doing extremely well. I'm very happy. What about you guys? Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the time crystals because they seem a little hokey to me. But I got to tell you, like the whole inter, you know, like Captain Pike and his backstory, and yeah. like actually seeing like the updated version of him, like it, it was scary. It was cool to see, like, man, that he's a stand-up guy. Yeah, he said basically my morals and in, in, in like the essence of who I am can't be so they did it steered they, away. You know, they connected him. In this episode, to his iconic fate of you know ending up in the chair, right? Yeah, he, has he has no, no chair. chair. <laughs> he has no chair. Um, the beep beep chair. And you know, I had the sense that this was going to happen, right? You know, he's going to be entering the whatever the, the the place where they get to get the time crystal, and there's going to be connected to you know his future fate. We know what his fate is. Yeah. And so I, I, I personally wasn't surprised when when that happened, but he had to essentially. Accept his fate, you yeah. know, that he's going to have a horrible accident. He's going to end up a completely disfigured, you know, figure but, in that chair. But not just accept it. I mean, set it in stone yes. is what he yeah. was really yeah, doing. Yeah, right. he steered away from it, you know. And that's, right, right. And it, it's, like, it's like he passed the gum Jabbar, you know. He truly is a human. <laughs> yes. He truly nice. is yeah. an adult as well, too. Like, he, he accepted his fate, and he doesn't know when it's going to happen. Right. Well, he knows that he doesn't look that much older when it happens, yeah. right? He wasn't an old guy. But, you know, what we do know is that chronologically, it's about, what, nine years, nine years yeah, away? About something like that. So, you know, even still, you know, the first thing I said when we saw that scene was, man, he's got that hanging over his head now. It's not just like, yeah, at some point in your distant future, it's like it could happen at any time as far as Captain Pike knows. Mm -hmm. So, you know... It takes a real starship captain to make that kind of decisions. Right. And, and yeah, when you have the the all sentient life in the galaxy hanging in the balance, I mean, you that's pretty huge motivating factor. You pretty much have to do whatever it takes right. Right, to succeed at that point. So the stakes are super high. I do like how th this season has connected to Captain Pike's backstory in general. I really like the fact that they right. showed. That he really was in love with the girl, you know, from Talos Four, yeah, yeah. and so it really makes it much more poignant that at the end of it all, he's going to end up back with her. Yeah. Definitely. You know? Well, it made me think too, after learning more about Captain Pike, that he experienced more with her on Talos Four yeah. than we saw on the TV show. Oh yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah They yeah. could have spent years together, decades mm. together, from his perception. Which I thought was, you know, it just makes me think that well, must be, well, because you know, you don't... It wasn't decades, but I do, I, I agree. There was probably a lot more going on there than... A lot more was, of them studying him yeah. and her and all that. So, yeah, it does. It, 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 it puts a, a cool, you know, just makes it more um, poetic in a yeah. sense. Yeah. Now, so, were you implying that, that they, they could distort time, the Talosians can distort time and make yeah, it seem like be. he was there for years? Yeah. I got, there's no I, indication of that. Well, though. I don't know. I mean, when I watched the original pilot, I, I got the sense that they were in those visions that the Talosians were giving them, like that it was an instant. Like they, they did that thing and they came out of it and it was like no time had passed. Mm -hmm. That's what I always thought. Even it certainly could be. I mean, it's just all subjective time. They could you know, make the perceptions. They could yeah. make them live an hour and a minute, certainly. I don't know about that. I mean, they, they used to think about that. They used to think that way about dreams, where, where mm -hmm. you, could have a, you could have a dream that seems to last for a week and, but but they, they, they've kind of shown scientifically now that dream time and regular time well, Bob, is roughly... Sure, but these are not dreams. Rough, yeah, no, they're, they're not dreams, but yeah. still your mind is... Is, is operating at a speed. Is, is, right, yeah, but Bob... Not, they're not overclocking the brain. Yeah, what are they doing, you know? What about Captain Picard when they, that probe did overclock his brain and he lived a whole lifetime in like 10 minutes? That's bullshit. It, no, that's so, but that's canon. It happened. Yeah, but happened. they're not Talosians <laughs> that were doing that. That's a weird All other right, alien. Well, that's what, saying, that's whatever, that whatever. That's it could, he could have been on that planet played the with flute? her for, for, yeah. for weeks and months. Yeah. It could have been like a... All right, yeah, know. it's a small point. Right. Let's move on. All right, but the point, the, the other point <laughs> I want to make is that, man, Anson Mount is killing God, it. I love yeah. him so much. He is so good. I, I listen to his podcast, The Well, um, and he interviews, um, he interviews the actor that plays... Spock. Spock. Now, Peck, he, you know, what's his first name? Is it Justin? Mr. something? <laughs> 
Anyway, yeah. he... The, these two actors are fantastic. Right. They had a really heart-to-heart, -heart interesting um, you know, discussion with each other. It was an interview, but it was, it was a discussion as well. And it's cool because they're, they're different from their characters, but you, know, you are you know, you, I'm picking up the vibe of their characters as well. There's a lot of them mm -hmm. in those characters, which right. I, I appreciate. You know, a good actor has to work sure. out of themselves anyway. So Michael and Spock had a good little oh, yeah. side mission too. That, the, was, that was great. They, we had a couple of beam down missions on this yeah. one episode, which was awesome. And, it, and I was kind of on the edge of my seat. Like I, yeah. You know, we were trying to guess. Even though like, I knew that guy was sketchy. Yeah, I, I mean, knew. It's it was, just I all mean, too perfect. He meets the guy from, yeah. from the Shangzhou and... It's like that. Nah, I'm thinking the whole time. This is a perfect setup. This whole thing. This yeah, guy. Is, I suspected he was compromised, yeah. and and I'm glad that they had the throwaway line. Spock said uh, he was blocking my tricorder, so I, otherwise I would have yeah, known. Right. Like, okay, that's good. Like, that's what we asked for, right? Give yes. us those throwaway lines yes. to, to explain why you know it makes sense. Right. One thing pissed me off. What? The phaser. Yeah, like she didn't. What's this pew pew pew? <laughs> Where's the phaser beam? You know, it's saying, like, come on, I want to yeah. see that. What's, why? All right, I, I, it's too I agree. Powerful. I agree, it's, it's too, too powerful. powerful. It's a thing. When you have technology like a, a phaser with a disrupt you know, beam that could destroy anything, stuff. it's hard to have a fight, you know, because once whoever gets the phaser first wins. I know, but don't you gimp it like a pew pew. Yeah. Give it, do some, you know, give him a force old, field. Something. What about a wide beam? You know, maybe it could it would have been weaker, but it would have been cool if she turned the front yeah. because there's different settings settings on yeah. the thing. If she turned the front and then shot it, and it did like a dispersion type of beam. Meanwhile, Spock could have been across the room, like trying to figure out the magnetism thing, yeah. which was really cool. It's such an iconic weapon. Yeah. I want but they to see that beam. It. Right, they totally gimped it as a plot device because that they frustrates me. Yeah. But, but this is old school, wait, though. You know. No, all they had to do. See, the, the we're talking about nanites. Maybe, here, maybe. Like, they, they did make a mistake in that scene. Yeah. We're talking about nanites. Right. So think of it, think of it as a mass of, of like metal coming yeah. towards her, right? So she shoots at it. It just b b shoots a hole through it, and it easily can re recover right. from that. Yeah, you're just killing a few at a time. Then she goes like this with it, and it just kind of cuts it in half temporarily. Then it just rejoins and keeps coming at her. Like She's just trying to kill as many of them as she can. It was desperate. She knew that she was going to be dead. Spock was her only hope. Yeah, that's true. I mean, she was. you could hear her grunting out of fear. Yeah. Like It was a tense moment. That would be hard. Cool, though. Would you rather fight one creature or 10,000 little creatures, yeah. you know? That's, that's what that's, that's what that's what makes a little you know swarm technology these little nanites. That's what makes them such a, a fiendish enemy because it's not one big thing. It's a swarm of thousands or millions, and they're so hard to fight. And that's why you, you don't see that very often because mm -hmm. it's just too devastating of a of a, of a potential weapon. Right. It's such a right. oof. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So that I, I pretty much enjoyed every scene that was mm -hmm. in the, this version. Like, I, I really enjoyed the, uh, the talk between uh, Ash and, what's her name? Um, yeah, the Chancellor. Yeah, the Chancellor. Yeah. She's cool. I like the character. Yeah, yeah. I like that we have a back. See, this is, this is why getting into seasons two and three and four are good, because we have a background now. Now yeah. they, have a, they have all that to play off of. There's so much more emotional stuff going on. You know, and to think of what happened to their son, like... Mm -hmm. The they, little Fallout 4, you know, aging thing there. Yeah, yeah. like, you know, he... That was such a mind fuck, you know. That that was the son. It was such a cool thing that they threw Good in idea. there. Good idea. And then really the two cool of idea. them kind of are, you see them as the parents mm -hmm. with a weird kind of relationship with each other. Like Pike is talking to them, and it's occurring to them, like, wait, our son has a name, and you what? You talk to him? How did you talk? Like you know, you get that yeah. anxiety of almost like he. He's not that little boy anymore, you know. Right, like right. he's something else. He was now. an infant when they left him there. Yeah, yeah, which wasn't that long ago. Right. 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 Um, and you know, I thought I thought that, like I said before, because there was background between characters, I'm, I'm even starting to see them use more of the secondary characters. Mm -hmm. You know, you saw them talking to each other. Um, I'd still like to hear them talk, you know, give them some lines on screen yes. and get to know them a little bit. Call better. them by name more, so yeah. you get really, yeah. They need to get to the Chekhov level, the Sulu level. Exactly. You know, where we know them as secondary ca characters. Not, they're not there. It's still not there yet. I know. I know. That's like the one, my one still persistent criticism of Discovery, even this season. They're not developing those second characters. And it wouldn't take much. But come right. on, we want to see the family. We want to really, really engage more with all of the other characters. I agree. It doesn't take a lot. It's a line here and a line there, mm -hmm. you know, just a little bit. Like, you know, it's that not. lizard guy. It was really cool, like, having him eat and talk yeah. to them. And call I love him. I was hatched ready. What yeah. a great line that was. <laughs> come on. And then at one point, I, I was joking with Liz. It's like he does this on the table. Like he dropped the mic. Like like oh, that. He do a that. mic drop. Really? Yeah, yeah, it looked he like did. he did a mic drop. Oh. <laughs> but I, the That's still a thing in two hundred years. I guess so. The character's cool though. Like you know, 
I like them. I want to see more of them. Yeah. Then there was that other weird alien on the bridge. With the face? Yeah, it has like, <laughs> it has like these flippers on the face, whatever. Yeah. It was really weird. Like, I don't know. Like, it's cool. Right. I'd like to see the other aliens. You remember that alien from the cartoon yeah. that, that sat at the console? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. he, like, three armed dude? Yeah, he's a cool alien. He was cool good. Alien too. I, I, like, I like the aliens that are clearly not just, you know, some makeup on a human. They're clearly, yeah. they're extremely humanoid, you know, which is a little bit annoying, but they're clearly, like, n you know, not just a prosthetic. They're, like, advanced. Like a really full head end. prosthetic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the full. Yeah, but I mean, not just an hour. I know, but, 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 you, but like his eyes, his eyes are of course his key, yeah, his yeah. key feature. You would never, you could never have seen that in, in right. Trek. Right. In right. Yeah, they're taking advantage of the advanced sure. you know, CG technology. Yeah, think about how cool the Gorn would look in, in a modern. Oh tape, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. should we give them a warning? So we're going to talk a little bit about the previews of next week. All right, yeah. So if you don't want to hear it, this is the time now. to advance to the end where we tell you to watch Alpha Quadrant Six. But uh, yeah, cool preview of the, net, the yes. next two episodes. Oh my I God. think to close out the season, we're going to get oh a peek God. inside the Enterprise. We, we did get a peek inside. The yeah, Enterprise. in the preview, I'm but the we're going to get like a full. You know, yeah. they're going to be take us. Inside and Jay it. spotted it. We're like, I was just accepting what I was seeing and didn't really <laughs> analyze it. And Jay's like, that was the Enterprise. Well, the, the reason why I knew it was the Enterprise about. was because I saw like four people wearing the, uh, the monochromatic right. yeah, right. Yeah. uniform. And then I'm like, holy, oh my God, we gotta go back. So we rewound it real quick and we're checking it out. And then you, then, you know, net, then we freeze framed it and we're like, okay, there's the iconic chairs, there's the stairs, yeah. there's the red railing, you know, it was oh all my there. God. So mm -hmm. what they did was they basically took the Enterprise and discoveried it. You know what I mean? Like they, they yeah, it's like using their, like our, their study, our modern technology rendering the Enterprise with modern tech. And yeah. like this is what it, they would have made it look like if they could. It's yeah. great. It's exactly what they should. Do. Yeah, it's fine. I, I realize that it's, it's not perfect. Be, no, it, it does. It, it works. You know, it I might, see the whole thing. Though. I want to see the whole gestalt. Oh yeah, yeah, not, not a little cool. Yeah, we will now. I mean, I'm sure that the, yeah. the, the and out it, the it just now. whets our appetite even more oh, for a God. Star Trek Seriously. Enterprise spinoff. They look. We're not the only people demanding. Do it. it. Right. Do like, it. CBS <laughs> has to know they've got they've got excellent characters. Yeah. You know, yeah, they've got the... All the, the elements whole, are there. It's such a no-brainer. pull the trigger. It's a no-brainer. I'm excited about the George O series. I'm excited about second. the animated thing. And uh, that's all great. Yeah, that's all fine. But, but, that's oh, all cool give in the us, game. Give us but, Pike but and But the best thing, the best thing to come out of Discovery, the whole TV show, in my opinion, is, Pike. is this thing with Pike and Spock. It's yeah. the best thing that they wrote. And it's right there in front of them. They, they, they just need good writers. They have everything else. Look at they already have the, the set. For the bridge. Maybe that's why they do have the set. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, but Jay, do they abandon the whole Discovery series? No, they don't series? have to. They why don't have they? to. But I'm for it. I would be okay with it. I would, I would yeah. If it's an either or, I'd, I'd go with Pike, Spock, and, you know, and Enterprise. Enterprise. And you know that they they re they redid the Enterprise. This is this is the yeah. Discovery Enterprise. Did we talk about that on the other show? I mean, they really made... It, it, there's It's a little subtle, but if you look at it, they made a whole suite of changes to really sure. to upgrade mm -hmm. it and make it make it fit in better. And it looks great. I love it. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Anson Mount is awesome. <laughs> really, Jay? You he's, really think I that? I love him. I love him. I think he's great. <laughs> he really nails that Star Trek captain thing. He's, he's doing it. Mm -hmm. Now, look, I... I do love a lot of characters in Discovery. I mean, look, I'm not putting any of them down. It's a great show, and, and this season was way better than the first season. The mm. second half of season two is great. If, if, it. if they could make the second half of season two just continue at that at that intensity, they have a fantastic show now. Right. Um, you know, I mean, it, it was it had a rough start, but I mean, it really, I am super, I am thoroughly enjoying these episodes now. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I can't wait till next week. I can't wait wait until the, the season. Wait, we have two more full two episodes. More episodes. Two more episodes. Yeah. So th these two episodes, you know, gonna be good. are going to be awesome. And you should join us for those episodes. We'll be back here Please. next week, next Thursday night, to review episode thirteen. Just two episodes left. So you can go to Alpha Quadrant Six. That's the number six. Dot com to check us out and you can become a patron to help us keep going and you know we there's clearly we've got more stuff to happen here right and we need more things right Ian what do we need thanks all right <laughs> so guys go to Alpha Quadrant 6 and check us out on YouTube thanks see you next week make it so